Hey guys, Buckskin Dave here. I, got a, I put a battery in this side by side. Uh, man, have you guys bought batteries these days? Whoosh. I had to put one in Sarah's Forerunner and 123 bucks, and that wasn't the most expensive one. This one was almost 70 bucks. Um, this is actually a pretty good battery for this. I, uh, I probably would have just went ahead and started it with the, uh, I got one of them jumper things. I just start it, but the snowplow runs on the battery, the winch. So it doesn't have an alternator in it. So I kind of don't have much choice here. Anyway, I'm going to shove this battery in. It's pretty easy. It's just a little tight in there. So let me shove it, let me shove it in here and then I'll show you kind of tight. You know, it's got these little rubber things here. Hold it down. The, these rubber things are the biggest problem trying to get them hooked in. Because they won't stay in there. Yeah, I'm going to start cussing before this is done. Anyway, I'm going to get these So it's kind of cute, these people that make batteries, okay, and people that make trucks, okay, they can't have all of the positives and negatives on the same side of every battery. Some of them are on one side, some of them are on the other, you know, and they don't give you enough wire in there to turn the battery all the way around. So you got you got to buy the right one, and <laughs> it turned out with Sarah's rig, the one that Everything was turned the right way. You know, the terminals were in the right spot and everything. That was the more expensive of the two. Big surprise, right? All right, hold on a minute. I'm going to show you what this looks like, and then I'll try to get it wired up. Anyhow, so all of them are color-coded, so I got black on one side and red on the other. This is a black one. This goes over here. So here's a red one. All right, well, I'm gonna work on this. Tell you what you need to do. Go get you a cup of coffee and we'll get this done here in a minute. Okay, I got them hooked up. It, it's not hard. It's just there's no room in there for these big fat Fingers that don't have much feeling in any try to get a little 10 millimeter bolt on that battery. Plus, the angle of those terminals aren't like the angles of the terminals on the battery I took out. I had to bend everything a little bit to fit. And they don't give you a lot of extra wire to work with. All I got to do is put those these straps in to hold the battery in and be done. So anyway, we're uh, we're fighting our way now through a, this is the beginning of, a, of probably the first really good winter storm. Uh, right now it's like 12 or 13 degrees out there, 25, 30 mile an hour winds. Um, and uh, it's supposed to be, what would they say, 16 below tonight, tomorrow morning. And then it's going to be negative Anywhere from two or three, five, negative five to negative 12 for the next four or five days. Snowing on and off. I don't know about this wind. I don't think we got more than four inches of snow, but it's not going, it's not being put down everywhere. The wind is putting it down in other places and drifting and stuff. I've got a big drift in front of here that I'll have to push this through when it's done blowing. So we're working our way through that. And uh, I want to try to do a little shooting today. We'll see how that turns out. Um, I'd, I'd like to shoot my 50 just, just to put a couple of rounds through it. So I'm going to get these straps on, grab another cup of coffee, and uh, this thing will be ready to go for when the weather is ready for me to do it. Okay, so anyway, um, 
I got a few projects going here. I've been working on an article on Damascus steel. <clears throat> kind of an interesting deal. I may do a video on it once I get it all in my head straight. Uh, what it is, it's uh, it's it could be a little confusing. But anyway, uh, I've been working on that for an article, and <laughs> this is a good time to do it because boy, being in front of the fire in the house is a whole lot better than being out there doing something. I uh. I gotta go and change the chickens, put some water out for the chickens. It it only stays liquid for a few minutes, so I gotta go do that and I, if the wind dies down just a little, we'll go out and shoot my fifty. I like to just throw I just like to warm the barrel up a little bit. So anyway, what I'm gonna do, it's kinda nice when it's shitty out here like this. I wanna just shoot a little. It's good to shoot in bad weather because a lot of times when you're hunting you're gonna have bad weather. Um but I have a box of uh, 50s that were experimental when I first bit the, built the rifle. And they're all, they all shoot okay. Okay. But I've got my load that I've settled down on now. So, uh, I was thinking uh, maybe we can start shooting them up so that I can start reloading them with the load that I like the best now. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to shoot from the door. At the targets on the range there because it's still windy. Uh, I think I was looking when I left the house, the little wind gauge said uh, 11 miles an hour, or no, the temperature was 11 and the uh, wind was blowing about 10 miles an hour. So we might be able to get in there and get a few shots off. Okay. These first ones were, these were black powder loads. What was wrong with these is they were 400, and I think they're 425 grainers. Uh, they didn't work real well out of this gun, but I loaded a bunch of them up. So, it's good to get them out. Shoot them out. center of the steel where I was aiming. So. This isn't really spectacular shooting, but it does have to be done. Especially if uh, I want to have something to reload. It's nice about shooting on my range here too. Uh, I can recover the steel. I mean the lead. <laughs> Even shooting a steel target, it'll splatter out and with the snow on the ground, it won't roll off very far and I'll be able to find it over there. Uh, between the pistol shooting and that, uh, I'll tell you what, it don't look cold out here on that camera, but it's freaking cold out here. Yeah. This is, uh, I believe these are 30 31. 
and uh, I like them. Um, 3031 works good in this uh, with a heavier bullet, 515 grain or better bullet. Um, I went to bargain a little bit for my smokeless on this, and then I found some 57. 44. And that is my favorite smokeless powder. Anyway, let me shoot this last one before my fingers fall off. Wow. I really like shooting this 50. I mean, yeah, that's a big bouncer. But. So, anyway, like I say, see, I have these. This was my experimental box, and so you can see I got all kinds of different experimental loads in here. Um, and uh, on days like this, when it's really cold and I don't really want to do any kind of serious work, I just feel like shooting a little bit, and it's you know 30 yards, close range, open sight. Uh, I shoot up some of these, and when this box is empty, I've got another box over there. With loads that work really good with the new bullet that I, uh, see do I have it in here? It's a 515 grain bullet that I just finally got the, the mold for a while back. But I've been using it, and that's in a 30 to 1 lead mix. That's it. That's my load. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for stopping in for a cup. Anyway, uh, next time you feel like having a cup, take a look. I might have another one out.